Hello there. You're listening to the Strings of Fate podcast. My name is Chris and I play Vincent. We hope you're having a lovely day so far and that you enjoy the show. The wagon tears through the undergrowth of the forest, Bonnie maneuvering the horses past the trees, through the grass, and up onto the dirt. You can hear shouting from further behind you. The neighing of horses and soon the explosions of gunfire from within the tree line. As you begin to gain pace further towards the road, the bandits are riding their horses and are nearly parallel from the forest. And it looks like it won't be long before they catch up. We're going to handle this like a skill challenge. So basically what's going to happen here is I'm going to throw a situation at you and then I want you to react. The first situation is immediately as soon as they see you, a line of these riders, you can surmise maybe 10 to 12 of them, are just firing wildly. And you can see bullets just a rain of bullets coming from the tree line. Who's reacting? Uh, how far away are they? They are, I would say, still pretty far off. I'd say they're probably like 30 to 40 feet at okay. this point. Okay, okay, okay. Um, the first thing I would do is probably just cast darkness, use my infernal legacy, and cast, cast darkness. darkness in front of them so they would be riding into it. Okay, fantastic. I will make a check for them then. So 15 foot radius. 15 foot so radius. So whoever would be able to get into that. Darkness erupts into the forest and you hear a few of them just <laughs> go tumbling. You see a good amount of them still emerging. A few of these bullets are going to hit you all. 11 points of damage to each of you. Oh no! Oh, oh god. Ow. As bullets are... It's less than you would have taken if you hadn't taken out a few of them. As bullets are still... You can hear the roar of the camp leader as this huge horse, this huge muscly horse just... tears out in front of the pack and is moving much faster towards you as you hear him sort of scream out. She says, I don't like when what's mine is taken from me. You can see this figure now. They are a half-giant man with gray skin and this white short hair is pulled back. They're not wearing like a shirt. They're extremely muscular with scars that run up and down the body. The only thing that's on their chest are bandoliers of ammo as they unsheathe their guns and are preparing to fire on you. Uh, while riding this horse. <clears throat> I'll say it's either Azam or Lajar. Yeah, no, I'm good. Can I shoot them with splinter shot? Shoot them with splinter shot? Sure. 15 foot radius. I'll make the save. The fails. You fire splinter shot out and a hail of arrows. <laughs> the main one takes the brunt of the arrows as an arrow <laughs> glides into his shoulder. Doesn't stop, just keeps riding forward. Jeez. Behind him, Two more of those riders, their horses get and they whinny up as they collapse to the ground and they start running back because they're not dealing with that. <laughs> that means the main guy is going to get a shot. No. However, put those hit. 11 points of damage, 11 points of damage. As he's two big shots that fly out. He's not giving up chase. You can see that these huge smoking guns that he's dual wielding as he's charging down the road, firing shots. However, you have been able to take out a good amount of the riders in the back thanks to darkness and splinter shot. You see a few riders get up towards the side, kind of shooting past the main leader and then getting on either side you can see that they're riding in tandem as there are there are riders on the back of their horses that are looking like they're about to jump onto the wagon. Can I cast Eldritch Blast one bolt at each of the horses? Ooh. Go for it. Make your attack roll. Take out the horses. Sorry, horsies. Yeehaw! The no. first one against the horse is 11 to hit. It's a horse. <laughs> it doesn't have a ton. Okay, go for it. 
The next one is 26 to hit. 26. Oh. This one definitely connects really hard. You flash out an Eldritch Blast at one horse, it kind of soars past it, but the other one crashes into the side. That horse didn't like that and immediately tears off the side as one of them goes to jump across to your wagon. Doesn't make that jump as the horse moves to the side and just and gets trampled by the rest that are coming away. You hear the screams of The other one jumps and lands. The current orientation of the cart, Bonnie's driving, Renair hopped in the passenger seat. You three are kind of in the back, but are able to kind of see out some of the spaces, like peek out the sides. He leaps and is immediately grabbed on to Renair, who is trying to <laughs> punch him off, uh, but he's holding on to Renair and is threatening to pull him off the Ooh. side of the wagon. Uh, who's reacting? Oh my god. Uh, are, so is our wagon got a little a tent over it? It does, uh, yeah. Can You've been to able to peek out. Yeah, you can get to the front. Okay, I'll do that, and I'll just I'll try to knock that motherfucker off uh, with. I'll just take out a dagger. You know, it's close contact. Just I'll try to stab him with a little ahead. dagger. A little dagger action. A little dagger moment. Oh, that's cocked. That wasn't good. That was a three plus six. Nine. Six. Nine. He beats the DC to hold on as you start jamming the dagger. Vincent jumps in between these two as this man is trying to pull Renair off, off of him. and is just shanking him. He's like, ah, down! Damn it! <laughs> <Try. And laughs> Renair is fighting. Thank you! Uh, <laughs> Can I try casting Lightning Lure at the guy attacking Renair? Absolutely. Go Ooh. ahead and roll your attack. It's a strength save. Strength save. Natural four will fail. Yeah. <laughs> so I pull him closer to me so he gets off Renair. And he takes... Eight points of lightning damage. Here's what happens. As Vincent leaps to grab this guy and start shanking him with a dagger, just barely getting these shallow stab wounds into him, <laughs> Renair is trying to push him off and is getting ready to try and do this huge shove, but just can't get it right. A whip of lightning flies out from the back of the wagon, grabs onto the guy, and as Ram yanks him as he goes <laughs> off the back of the wagon. Thank so. you! As Grimy ass. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my wagon. <laughs> Not on my wagon. As this is happening, at this point, a good amount of them have gone. There's still around like six to seven riders behind the main one that are trying to catch up. This main guy is keeping pace with you all and is ready oh, another Jesus volley of shots. Christ. Can I cast Eldritch Blast at him? You absolutely can. I want to cast both my bolts at him. Go for it. First one is a 20 to hit. 20 hits. Second one is a 24 to hit. 24 also hits. And then okay. 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage as two Eldritch Blasts fly out the back of the wagon. Knocks him off balance. He only gets one shot off on you all and doesn't hit. As it goes off wide, you see another rider pick up pace, get past him, pull something from their satchel and light it as they no! it and throw it towards the wagon. It's oh, no, arcing no, no. towards oh, you. No, what are you doing? Can I ride to shoot an arrow at it and move it? Oh my god! Take a shot. 15 plus 8. Hey! 23. The stick of dynamite goes twirling through the air, threatening to land right in the wagon cart and blow you all to smithereens. Ladara quickly knocks an arrow past the leader's head. As it's arcing past him, the dynamite explodes. <gasps> you see on. the leader go flying and tumbling off the horse as many have to arc out of the way in order to just keep pace with you all. Oh my god. And there's still a few left, but the leader has been completely taken care of as the Dynamite explodes <laughs> out that way. Nice. Um, you can see a couple of these figures are now just trying to get in range and are firing more shots at you all. I'm it's an Azram. going to cast heat metal on one of their guns. Heat metal on one Try of their to guns. get them to drop it at least. I'll make that save. They do not save. Their gun goes clattering to the ground as they go. Ah! Damn! The other two do, and one of them hits with a natural. 
15 points of damage to Vincent and uh, Ladara as the bullets, a hail, another hail of bullets comes flying from the riders that are on the way. 15? 15 points. At this point, Bonnie sort of speaks up and is like, I, I can do more work back there, and then kind of pushes the reins into Renair's hand. Is <laughs> what? And <laughs> Bonnie comes out from the back and joins you all as you don't expect her. You're having this moment of, wait, who's driving? And you look over and Renair's like, hi, it's me. Oh God. I'm doing my best. Um, Be careful, please. That's not inspiring. Natural 20, Ooh. natural 18. Bonnie gets two of them just completely nice. to stop pursuing you as bullets hit them in the shoulders. They turn tail and start running. There's three left and you can see the one that you shot the dynamite out of there, which is kind of like spits, curses under his breath, reaches in and just is getting ready to... Can I cast, um, from my staff, I want to cast command at him. Ooh! And it's a wisdom save. A wisdom save. What's your save, DC? 18. Doesn't... I was like, natural 17. Oh my god. Minus one. (laughs) Your save is so high. Damn. Uh, Wow. I want to command him to flee. To flee. He lights this dynamite, and then he's holding on to it. All of a sudden, he just turns tail and starts running, forgetting about that he's holding it. Oh Oh my god, that's so messed up. Damn. Oops. (laughs) Did I do that? Two are left, and they're not entirely sure on what to do from here. But you see them gaining pace, and you see them ready themselves to try and jump onto the wagon, swords drawn. Can I just try to shoot an arrow at one of them? Go for it. Make a shot. Before she does that, I pop down to the back of the cart, and I, I touch her on the shoulder and give her cure wounds, because <laughs> she's looking rough. She is looking <laughs> kind of rough. So, 7 plus 4, which is... 11. Thank yeah. you. And here she goes. 14. 14 doesn't hit as the arrow whizzes past. You see one of them ready themselves and then leap, land on the outside, pull themselves up, and then pull their guns and just start firing wildly ah. into the cart. Can oh, I? You will take a little Can bit have, of like, damage a, first. A force field or something? I think only one of those hits, though. Four damage to each of you. Woof. The other one readies, seeing that the other one got on, and also seeing that you're all getting ready to kind of beat his ass for that, they point their gun towards the wheels and start firing. Oh my god, no, 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 no,
the most intense amount of fight that one could pull in this situation. <laughs> oh my god. Are you fucking kidding me? That's the same exact role. Dora, you go swinging towards this person. They dodge out of the way. They're struggling. Oh you can see they get one match lit and they're ready to drop it and then jump out the back. Can I try to blow wind at him and try <gasps> to blow the fire out? Give me one second while I do a Come on, come on, here. wind boy. Come on, wind boy. I'm going to do a roll behind the board. Roll your attack. What is it? Just roll just your it. attack and add your charisma modifier, we'll say. Come on, win boy! It's not a high DC. Nine. Nine? Yeah. There's a moment as you are watching the match, sort of, you just need the littlest amount of wind to work in your favor just this once. You think, and the most instinctual thing that you can do is clap your hands together in a small, just burst of wind, just <gasps> as the match gets caught in the wind. Just nice! Tumbling off. Can I then try to kick him off? Go ahead. Go ahead and make that attack roll, nice. which is just your strength. Ten. <laughs> Ten is enough because this guy was going to jump off, basically, thinking that he'd done it. He turns around and you just kick him in the butt and he <laughs> goes tumbling off. Uh, they are, they go tumbling and then crashing into the road as Renair is kind of, well done! And you feel the cart swerve. He's, oh, oh my oh. god. <laughs> You've at this point made it onto the road and are making your way back as Renair is driving, and Bonnie just fires a couple shots in the air. It's like, that's right, you sons of bitches! Oh, God. Bonnie, please just take Renair away from the- Oh, shit, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, she turns around uh, and begins to clamber back onto the cart and says, I'll take the reins there, and pulls it out of Renair's hands. He said, thank God, I was losing control. I was really <laughs> losing control of it. I was trying to hold on to it. It wasn't happening. Let's get the hell out of here right now. Is the guy following, that one guy, the final boss guy, is he catching up? Make a reception check. May I as well? Yeah, absolutely. 20. Yeah, 20. 18. 20, 18. Yeah. You can see off in the distance, you can see that their figure's kind of rallying together. Doesn't look like they're giving chase. You're not sure what their next move is. They're too far at this point. You're not sure if they're going to give chase or not further, but a lot of them are wounded. A lot of them who took shots from you all are not trying to die. And so they're going to go back to camp, it seems, and lick their wounds, perhaps. Otherwise, you have a pretty good distance on them at this point with all of the uh, shenanigans that you've pulled. So, as you all... The wagon is pulled along further. You break from the tree line of Hannigan's Bluff and are back out into the plains and you can see a long road ahead of you, but you're not being chased any longer. So you can all take a sigh of relief. I pull out the bag. I got uh, it. Oh, at least you got God. the bag. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see the... What? The, what? the wind? No? I like... What are you talking about? I like... I like the wind. Like, I, I made wind. You sure we weren't just mo on a you? moving cart? You're an air genasi. Yeah, but I can't do all the cool wind shit. Okay, it's... I'm proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. Anyway. <laughs> Azrim keeps like to himself, clapping his hands, trying to do wind again. Aww. So it, yeah, with a nine, it worked. It was just so imperceptible. Go inside, you don't know how to recreate it. You're just clapping your hands <laughs> and hoping for wind. Little Bonnie. Little... <laughs> speaks up and says, So what the hell happened about a plan and me being able to go in there and get somebody to, to you know? Oh, that's right. You what, didn't have what, a... what was all that? Why, why'd you run off on your own? Do all the fun stuff by yourself. Well, you I got it, didn't seem I? seemed like you had a handle that I trust you, you know? You're, this is, that was what you're good at, you know? Sneak Thank you. Around and... Thank you. Well, I got it, so I don't really see, like, an issue. I do commend you on getting it, but that was a bit dangerous, don't you think? Yeah, I had it handled. That's fine, right? 
I, uh, I know. I was fine. You know what they say. They say that behind sight is always 30, 50. What? What? That's... I don't, Azram, know I don't think heard. that's a phrase. How are you feeling, Azram? Honestly, I'm a little tired. <laughs> We've had a long day. <laughs> and I'll cast Mass Healing Word. <laughs> so everyone gets... Four. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Points of healing for everyone. We that's my last We just got now. here today. And we've honestly done so much. And honestly, have. I would like a bath. Oh, do they have baths good. around here? I sure hope so. We've they been traveling baths. for weeks, I feel. We've been traveling for so long. Yeah. And when's the last time we got? This is like our first stop. Yeah, you're starting to smell. You know what, Vincent? I was gonna, I have, I was gonna say it. I have never once mentioned how you smell. <laughs> I have never once. You know I take care of You know my body's a temple. <laughs> I think we all smell like shit. Can we please keep going? Yeah, yeah, I'm tired. God. Bonnie, please take us anywhere that's not here. Bonnie continues. Back to town, I guess. The wagon continues on the road. You can hear that Bonnie's it's a little bit of annoyance in her voice. But also, uh, make an insight check, anybody. I'll do it. <laughs> Bondara. Bondara. Shut the fuck up. That's a 14. 24. Eight. <laughs> she's very good at, at keeping those emotions under control, except when she's in battle and she needs to kind of harness them. And so she's upset. She's definitely pissed off that she didn't get what she was told she would get from this. But they also can't fault the results. They're pretty impressed. Shucks. There's a there's a little part where, you know, the retort of, of Ladara holds up the bag. I got it, didn't I? There's a little bit of shit. I guess she did. Hmm? Hmm. And then continues down the road. Renair kind of <sighs> takes a deep breath and looks back and says, further on from that, is everyone alright? Ah. Uh. I, I'm all right. I'm a uh, bit beaten up, but some scratches here and there. I'm okay. We planning on doing anything else tonight? Like in a sleeping? No, I hope not. Do you I think... have, I have, I have expended most of my spells. <laughs> I'm very tired. Do you think that there's like a like a tavern or something? There's a saloon. A s- it's kind of busted. <laughs> Azure, go ahead and make a Constitution saving throw for me. <gasps> Why? <laughs> 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 What? It's a little sus. Why? Oh no! Oh my god. Six. Azram, you gain one point of exhaustion. Oh my god. As you feel <gasps> shooting pain in your veins that are just. Uh, feels like sharp, like something stabbing from the inside. Are you, are you okay? What yeah, happened? As you see Azram buckled down in pain all of a sudden. What's, just, what's, what's wrong? <laughs> is it, what's going on? Oh no. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. We're going to the doctor. Is it the, oh, okay. Yeah, we're we going to, to the doctor. Bonnie, do please take us to the doctor right oh, now. Ladara's kind of panicking, um, seeing him in pain. Okay. W- what's going on? Just, we have to go to the doctor. He, we have to go to Dr. Mary's. wrong. Please just take us to the doctor as fast as possible. I will literally pay you. Can't say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> Renair turns around and says, w- "What's happening?" Is this I don't the- know. I think so. I think it's a thing. <sighs> Something's wrong with Azram, and we need to. It's probably the parasite. Hey, it's the parasite. Has it been that- what was the timeline that we were given? Like three months. Like three months, and it's it's hitting about that mark. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Okay, let's hurry this. Shit. Okay, let's move. The pace is exponentially increased. Working the horses very hard as you make your way back <laughs> through the plains. At this point, nightfall hits. The sky itself fills with stars, but you can't really enjoy it because Azram is in a lot of pain. What do you need? Labor. Do you need anything? No. Do you need anything? What, what's wrong? What do you need? Uh, I, I need. Uh, Ladara takes out like a rag and like kind of like starts like, oh my God. like patting the sweat on his forehead. She's like, okay, just you just need to like breathe, calm down. It'll be fine. We'll get there as fast as possible. Just don't panic. We will figure it out. Azram lays down in like the back of the wagon and. Is just trying to regulate his breathing and just, just practice your breathing. Yes, she starts on. braiding his hair, just like please calm down. Please calm down. <laughs> he holds on to his necklace as he just lays there and it's like, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Ow, it's okay. Ow, you're ow, fine. Ow, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. The door's like low key having like a panic attack. She's like, oh no. Make a perception check, both of you. Oh, oh no. Either that or a medicine check. I'd rather do the perception. 
25. 25 per perception. 18. 18. Ladara, as you are braiding Azrim's hair, trying to calm him down, you can see that on the exposed parts of Azrim's skin, like on the undersides of the arms, the veins are bulging. <gasps> and they are <No>. dark. <gasps> like this, this dark, very sickly, inky color. Oh my god. How, oh my far, how far away are we from the town? You're a good amount of... Yeah, you will make it, I will say, within the hour. Okay, with can the I... With the pace that you're going. Can I check the bag and see what's inside of it? And inspect? Yeah. Do we have you, any water? Inside the bag? <laughs> no water. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have water, like you would yeah. fill up oh, at the town like on that flask, one. Especially because yeah. you got supplies. But inside the bag, as you open Doc Berry's leather bag, you see a number of strange implements. You can see that there are some oblong devices and shapes that aren't easily comprehensible just looking at them as to what they would do. They like squeeze and clamp. And there are others that seem rather dangerous. Like there's one that's like a metal rod that emix, uh, emits a spark of electricity at the end. Just uh. <laughs> And you're not entirely sure what that's for. And then there's other ones that are a little more normal. There's one that looks to be like some sort of two-pronged fork and then a, a mallet made of, where the face is made of some kind of like rose quartz. You're not entirely sure what all of this stuff is or what it does. I'm gonna be very careful with it, but like I will inspect it and... Is there anything we can use? I mean, I don't know what any of this does, but like... Is Please there anything... don't poke me with the fork. Oh, okay, we will try not to, <laughs> oh. but if there's anything we can do to like, maybe like, ease the pain, I don't know what any of this is. Can we so. do anything to shut him up? He's just so dramatic. Vincent, go ahead and make an Arcana check with advantage. Ooh. Because this is magic and it's a hyperfixation. Yes, baby! Which we got from d Yes! Thanks oh my god! Um, that's a 16 plus 9. 16 plus 9. Nice. These instruments, though, you're not, in it. you're not versed in, you know, extra planar magic. You're not versed in extra planar medicine. But you do recognize some of these items. That two-pronged fork, you've seen it in a lot of the newer books, like the newer studies on what the planes are and how people interact with them. This is a tuning fork. It's supposedly supposed to be tuned to another plane. Yes, we, we had these before. I know what this is. I know what this is. Okay, okay. Do you know how to... No, it? maybe. I don't know. Do I? Can I... Ding. With what? Just against the side of the cart, I guess. And uh, any solid surface. You Vincent know. will just hit it against his hand. Just to start. Ding. A very pleasant tune rings out. I roll something here. You... Hit that tuning fork for a second, and Azrim, you feel it. Pain dissipates for just a second. But as soon as that ringing stops, it comes back. Go ahead and make another con save. Con! Oh, did that do anything? Please keep hitting the fork. Oh my god. Continuously? Like, don't stop? Yeah, don't stop. Okay, I'll... I will say... Natural 20! You're able to fight back the pain as you can feel that stabbing pain. I will say... It feels like it comes back worse after hitting that fork. Never There's mind. a moment of relief, and then it's like it, a resurgence that is. Uh, so so hit it again. No no drop the fork drop oh, the fork drop the fork. Okay all right all right I'll put it you're back. You're able in the to bag. push on Azrim. You're holding on with a natural twenty. You don't have to make another con save for a little while as you are. <sighs> Renee looks like practice your breathing. Practice your breathing. It's all right. <laughs> We're gonna get you there. Uh, you pass the threshold into Goldstead, where it is very much nighttime now, the streets are empty, you roll up the wagon to the side of Doc Berry's, and then everyone gets out, Bonnie included, looks and says, we'll worry about money later. Let's get him in. Come on. Um, Ladar kind of like we'll pick him up. slumps him. Bonnie and Renair pick up and help <laughs> you pick up uh, Azrum, and <laughs> they're all a three-person team <laughs> carrying in Ladar Azrum. Vincent's small. <laughs> Vincent's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent comes walking in afterwards uh, as this urgent... Uh, I'll come in first with the bag. Yeah, this Wild West EMT comes in, yeah. <laughs> pushing through the door. As the door opens, you see the light sort of turn on. You see Doc Barry walk out and look, oh gosh, you're here. Yeah, and we gotta do this quick. Here oh, you go. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, oh, whoa. oh my god. <laughs> please, it's all right. please, please, please help. I got it. All right, he opens the door for you. He leads in. All right, lean him back, lean him back. Okay, uh, 
What do you need? <laughs> anything, anything. He clears off a table. I'm here. All right. <laughs> okay, I know uh, where he asked the symptoms are. We already know. Parasite is the word we're using, right? Yes, Everybody's parasite. in agreement. Parasite. Am I in labor right now? No! The tuning fork. Where's the tuning fork? I got it right here. Okay, in the little hammer. The little hammer with the, yeah, the, yeah. Here, here, the crystal. Here, here, here. Crystal. It. Vincent, you ham Doc Barry this strange sort of brass tuning fork, as well as the same little brass hammer with that little face of rose quartz. He quickly strikes it, and a tone echoes throughout the inside of the office. And when you struck it against your hand, this tone echoed fairly well in the wagon. And there was a slight relief from the pain for you, Azrim. But as the dock strikes it against the rose quartz, there is a big relief. You can feel that pain dissipate and that pressure dissipate. You can actually see the veins that were bulging across Azrim's body just settle. And as that tone begins to fade, Azram, you feel that tightness returning and then another strike. As you are calmed, you feel yourself just, the events of the day, kind of starting to drift off. The doctor breathes deep, he says. As he's continuing to hit this in this rhythmic tone, he says, Okay, now that the creature is hearing its resonant frequency, we should be good. For how long? Well, we're gonna have to keep this up for the rest of the night. I'd say the usual way that we did things, if I'm remembering correctly, is a good eight hours of this, constant. Okay. Constant, rhythmic. If we keep on doing that, by the end of the eight hours, that being will have returned to its originating plane. All right, so we just have to hit a bell or a tuning fork. Yes, we just have hours. to keep playing this resonant frequency within Azram for eight hours. Okay. See. Oh my God. So so, should we like take turns? I got it. it it's okay. You sure. I don't want to risk all. No. Yeah. No. I used to do this a lot for the teams that would return. This happens a lot. No, not in regular, <laughs> not in regular society, but in Magus Academy society with extra planar researchers, this does happen where they take something back. This is actually something I learned from them. It's the way that they reduce what they call planar bleeding. Huh. Okay. It's honestly, really interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, if that's going to help, if that's going to work, it just should. play this for eight hours and then it's gone and it's done? Well... Yeah, it should. Uh, basically how this works is that the research points that each plane carries its own special frequency. A little sound, a tone that plays, on that, that hums in the very blueprint of each creature from that plane. Huh. Playing that tone using rose quartz and a tuning fork set to that originating plane strengthens that creature's tied to their originating plane. And because the planes overlap in certain places, mostly here in Afra, <laughs> that creature will be sent back. But it takes a lot. And the problem is, is if I stop this at any point, that creature's gonna come back with a vengeance and a lot stronger and a lot angrier. So we just have to make sure that you keep playing. As long as I'm not interrupted, we should be fine. Okay. Well, I have no spells. Uh, and I can... I'm very tired. So if anybody comes into this, uh, this office and needs your help, uh, or tries to interrupt us, I, I'm tapped out. You can much. rest if you would like. I can take the first, like, I can sit here and I'll, I'll watch for the first, like, couple hours if you want to rest. If you're willing. Is there I... a cot I can sit on? I'm just, I I'd like to stay in the to... area, but I could also sleep on the floor. It's not a big deal. I won't be able to sleep anyway, so. Hmm. I'll stay up. Okay. Hello! This is Christian, the Dungeon Master for the Strings of Fate. I hope you're enjoying episode 3 so far. We're getting into a groove of editing and recording and having like a schedule set, and so far we are staying fairly consistent with it, so that's cool. <laughs> One thing I wanted to touch on today is that we introduce mechanics that come from a rule set from dnddisability.com, the ADHD mechanics that we're using for our bard, Vincent. 
Uh, Chris and I talked about this coming into the game, seeing as many of us in the party have ADHD and love the representation that this rule set brings. This rule set comes from dnddisability.com. You can follow them on their social media at dnddisability, that's D-N-D-D-I-S-A-B-I-L-I-T-Y, and on Instagram at dnd.disability. We're going to have more specific credits down in the description below, but they're an amazing team working to bring disability into the tabletop RPG space with a number of supplements dealing in things such as ADHD mechanics, autism mechanics, chronic pain mechanics, etc. So go check out their work. They are fantastic. They're amazing. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your supplement in our game. We're very honored. Further on from that, I just wanted to say again that if you tweet about the show using the hashtag softpod, I go through that Twitter hashtag every day, and I pick out names, and then I take those names and I use them for NPCs. I've already begun writing a number of NPCs, and thus I need a lot of names. And so uh, you may see your names coming up sooner than you think. I hope you're okay if they're somewhat villainous, but we're going to make them cool villains and not like weird villains. So in all honesty, tweeting about the show, telling your friends about the show, Posting about the show, it really helps us get the word out about things and expand the audience and introduce new people to our characters and our party and our story. We're a very small team that is working very, very hard to bring this content to you. And all of the love that you show us and all of the times that we see you talking about that you showed it to your friends or you watched it and they love it now, that really is amazing to us. So please, please, if you can, um, get the word out about the show as much as you can. Uh, either using the hashtag or just in real life, whichever you prefer. Other than that, another shout out to our captioning team, Dea and Dragonfruit. Y'all are doing amazing. The first episode is fully captioned. We're having a little bit of bugs with overlapping, but I think I can fix that. So we'll see. If it's not fixed, then I didn't fix it, but I might. So keep an eye out. We have a lot of cool stuff in store, so please, please keep an eye out. But I've taken up a lot of time here, so enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye. Okay, you guys keep watch with the doc as he points over. I have chairs that you can bring in from the waiting room and then y'all can fight on there. You can lie down the entrance, whatever you want. I'm gonna keep at it. Don't worry. I'm used to this process. I haven't done it in a little while, but I'm gonna be up all night. Second that eight hour hits, Mr. Asim will have a clean bill of health. We'll be good to go. Do I trust Mr. Doc Barry? Go ahead and make insight check. Uh, 15 plus 9. 24. 24. He's confident in what he's saying. That's all you can really read on him. Is that it's like he's been asked to return to an old job that he's very familiar with. And he's just kind of nostalgic. Like, I remember when I used to do this all the time. (laughs) Don't even worry about it. Like, this is something I used to do all the time back then. Okay. I'm going to sit in the, I'm going to stay in the room. Okay. With Azram and Doc. It's very silent in the room except for this echoing tone. And eventually, uh, Doc kind of breaks the silence and says, Oh, you see, it's a pretty... I know that this is kind of monotonous and quite literally monotonous, he says as he strikes the tone again. But honestly, this stuff always interested me back at the Mage's Academy. He says as he keeps striking that tone... And they say the whole universe has a song to it. And that each plane contributes a little piece of that. So, that's just a theory. But from what we've heard, I mean, there's something to it. I don't know if you have any thoughts of other worlds or other universes, that situation. I'm still not used to this world, honestly. Strange answer. Are you an extraterrestrial <laughs> from another plane? No, no, no. I just, I don't know. I'm just, I haven't really read into a lot of otherworldly things before. So, like, I also didn't really grow up with a lot of magic in my life. So, just, it's kind of new for me. That's interesting. I always, uh, the folks around town here, they also don't really grow up with magic. They don't see a ton of it if they're from Onseer, that sort of thing. But it's kind of beautiful, right? I, yeah, I've, it's very interesting. I didn't really have a lot of access to this kind of knowledge, so I'm very interested to 
see what that's all about, you know? Your friends, they cast magic too. Mr. Hazram here, mm. who's kind of delirious <laughs> on the table. Uh, I heard from some of the town folk that came by that they saw him casting out in the street. And the Onsirian ones are a little touchy on that subject. But the other ones thought that it was kind of cool. Yeah, he's pretty powerful. Where does that come from? Is he a wizard or sorcerer? He's a warlock. Oh. He kind of continues striking, but his face kind of tenses for a second. He says, gets his powers from an, another being? Is that what you mean? From a pact with a, an extra planar being? I don't know. Uh, that's all I know. So, he's, you know, pretty powerful, though. He's not a bad guy. You don't know what that being is? I haven't asked him. You don't care? It's not my business. Fair enough. I'm a doctor. I suppose I have to keep some kind of confidentiality. It's she always... kind of looks at him. She's like, yeah, you better. Is there like an issue? <laughs> There's no issue. Okay. No, I'm from the sovereignty. I know about the extra planes. I'm no religious freak of the morning lord like the Onsirians are. I'm not there. Just be careful if you are passing through Onsir and talking about that sort of thing. A lot of them are going to immediately assume that that pack is with something along the lines of a devil or a, or a dark force, that sort of thing. Oh, so. uh, cool. Okay, <laughs> well, noted. Huh. <laughs> Azram, you are just listening to that tone echoing over and over as you go delirious your vision blurring. That tone just takes over every thought in your mind and that serenity washes over you. And soon it turns into the tink, tink, tink of a hammer against an anvil. You're sat in the corner of the room, just watching the process this time. He's called you in here to watch the process a lot recently. You've never really been able to see up close it is what he does when he tink, tink, tink on the anvil. You've been asking for nearly a year now to see what he does have a weapon of your own to help him in some way but he said no every time and he says it with a very gentle but stern voice every time but this time he came up to you and he said all right son why don't you join me in the forge today really absolutely i uh, think i have something i need you to see I, I've always wanted to, yeah, I'd love to. And there you are, watching as he works tirelessly, heating the metal, quenching the blade, with grace and strength, forming a perfectly sharpened dagger against that anvil. He holds it up, and he scrutinizes it well, with his eye scanning over every detail. He looks over at you. Ezra. Come over here. Uh, uh, looks pretty cool to me. Is that all you think of this? He says as he kind of holds this and lets you expect it. Do I notice anything else about it? Make an intelligence check. Uh, well... <laughs> 16. As you're kind of looking at this, every blade looks cool. All of it does. And your father takes the time to point out to you what each defect that he made is. This time, you catch it first. It's a little place where the metal isn't completely even. It's imperceptible to most people, but you actually catch it this time. It's the, the metal... It's not really even right here. Correct. 
he says as he places it back down on the anvil. This one isn't yours. This is simply a model for you to follow, he says as he hammers down at that piece, attempting to even out the metal. It's about time you learn the ins and out of the forge. If you want a weapon, a dagger, you'll need to make it yourself. Okay, well, when can I start? Can I start now? Can I do it right now? <laughs> Let's walk through the process. So I know you're, you're precocious. You're very, very smart. Dad, I've watched you do this for years. I know exactly what to do. I know, I know, but it's different when you're working with your own hands. Watching someone is very different from doing it yourself. And at the end of the day, Azram, I'm not trying to show you the best way to make a weapon or a dagger. I'm trying to show you that there's beauty in the creation of one with your own hands. And there's beauty in the craft and working at it. There's beauty in doing things the right and the thorough way. So let's take it slow, all right? Come on. Oh, this is gonna take forever. <sighs> ah, come on, boy. He says as he kind of ruffles his hands through your hair. In that delirious state, the tones echoing, echoing, echoing. From outside. Huh? Oh, God. You, uh, Renair, Madara, you hear it too. I, as in. I was sleeping on some some chairs. I'm, I was trying to trying to rest. Yeah, uh, then I'll make a check to see if you reckon it. You wouldn't. <laughs> you sleep right through that oh, one. Lord. Yeah, you sleep right through this sound that echoes. It's not extremely loud, but you catch it. Ladar, you just hear this echoing, like, low thud. First you'd think it's thunder, until there's a few more in this arrhythmic pace. This... What was that? Doc, Doc is hitting this, and he says, go, go check outside. Make sure everything's all right out there. Oh, God. Okay. Do they get a long rest? A short rest? <laughs> Not eight hours. Damn. Uh, you can get a short rest. Okay. Sure. If you'd like, everyone can get a short rest if they'd like, if they're not doing any crazy activity. Because this is about like two hours into this process, as the doc is continuously ringing, Azrim Delirious is on the table. Ladara, you walk out into the waiting room, and Renair, Vincent, and Bonnie, who is still sort of sat straight up, Bonnie is actually awake uh, as you walk in. She looks like she's just woken up and looks at you and says, You heard that too? Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Where did that come from? I don't know, but I don't like it. Come on, you want to wake up these two, or are we... Maybe let's just see what's going on, and then we can decide from there. Okay. You push open the dock's door, and the dock is right on this main street that stretches all the way to the end of Goldstead. You turn, and you look down, and you can see at the... Entrance of gold. Say, go ahead and make a perception check for me. It is dark, but you have dark vision. 26. 26. There's commotion outside. You discover the source, that sound that cuts through the harmonic tuning fork, the jarring sounds of gunshots, repeated hollers coming from the main drag. And as you peek out with Bonnie looking down the road, there at the end of the street, dismounting from their horses, you see 15 gun-slinging bandits in flat-brimmed caps. There's a silence hanging over the town that is broken by their shouts and gunfire that pierces into the sky. With the 26 at the center of them, you see a muscular woman dismount from her horse, the head of a bull and the horns to match. She unslings a double-barreled shotgun from her back. This town has been a nuisance for long enough, she yells out into the night air. The hospitality or lack thereof we have experienced here has left the boss in sorry sorts. What do we think of that? As she turns back towards all the bandits who cry out in agreement. Old Denton's heart is broken. That after all the business we bring into this Shit-sty of a town. We're treated so poorly. 
Let me tell you, when Denton's heart is broken, all of our hearts are broken. She yells out, trying to echo across the town. Give up the Genasi, give up the bounty hunter. For every hour they aren't at my feet, well, we're gonna add a bit of uh, persuasion to our demands, starting right about, <sighs> she lights a torch and just <sighs> against one of the buildings, which <sighs> oh my God. begins to catch fire. Right now. Oh my god. You and Bonnie see this. We, Bonnie says, well, That's not good. No, no, it's not. Um, we need to get back inside now. What's the plan? Um, let's go find Vincent and Renee. They're probably gonna need to be woken up now. Okay, let's go. You are shook awake by Bonnie and Ladara. What what what, 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 what? What? We have a bit of an issue. A bit is a. Yeah, What's time. going on? There's about, uh, give or take, like, 15, I think I counted, uh, gunslingers outside right now. So. But out, right now? Outside? Like, mm-hmm, yeah. Um, they just set fire to a building across shit, the street. Shit. Okay, let's just be calm. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all um, right. Um, uh, um, they want two things, they said in particular. Okay. Um, uh, a Genasi and a bounty hunter, which we, I think, we have both. Um, so that's an issue. I don't have much, but I I can protect us in here. Okay, I like but that. I can't protect the people who are out there. Honestly, I think for the time being, we should just try to protect ourselves in this situation. We can't. We can't do that. They're going to burn the town down. They're going to burn Asra. the town. Down. They're going to burn the town. God. Okay. 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 If okay, okay. I I can protect. I can protect Azram while, because if, if, if Doc stops, Azram's going to die, and we can't do that, but I, can, can someone else? Okay, um, here, I'll, I'll go out there, Renair, will come with me, Bonnie, you're staying here, they want you. I mean, they can try. You can't fight them. They, they, but they're also going to be looking for Azram. If, if you guys go out there, you're going to get killed. There's a Maybe. lot of them out there. We, you can't, can't, you, we can't even take them with who we have. We can maybe try and lead them away, get them to get as far away from this building as possible so that we can save you guys time and save Azram time. You have to be careful. You, you cannot be caught by them. They'll kill you. That is just a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I'm not. No. We're not going into this thinking that this is a sacrifice mission. We, um, we're going to find a way to save everyone. Somehow, there must be. There's gotta be some way. I... We will... We're not... Idiots, we're smart. We're talented. All right. All Let's right. tell All the right. doc at least what's happening. Okay. I'll go All in. Right. Go in. I'm the doc knock. still focused on Azram's form, ringing the tone. Uh, the doc looks. I'm gonna get started on Morden Kynan's private sanctum because it takes me ten minutes to cast. Um, so I'm gonna take out a thin sheet of lead and glass and cotton and all my other different uh, materials, lay them out and just start casting it and trying to protect the office. Um, and so there would be a, uh, a cube around the office that is impenetrable. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can do that. Okay. Doc? Yes, what's going on? Um, not too long. Keep going. We're good. But there are about 15 gunslingers outside trying to get a genasi and a bounty hunter, so we have an issue, but um, you are going to stay here, obviously. Vincent's going to start something, whip something up, I don't know what, to protect you guys. We're still figuring out what we're going to do. So. That lady that you're with, uh, the, the Bonnie, mm. she's been in here a couple of times. She wouldn't happen to be a bounty hunter, right? I pull out a lot of bullets. Y who's to say? I don't, yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that we're just one for two and not two for two in my building, you in residence. Oh, well, you know, you know, well, see, that's, 
you know, the definition of a bounty hunter, like, uh, yeah, it's Bonnie. <clears throat> should I stop or should no, I no, move? No, 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 no. There's way, I, I can keep doing this, but you're gonna have to trust me. It, there's a way out of this building without going out the back, going out the front. I know another way. What way is that? If a couple of you can pick up this fella here, then we're gonna be going out through my room and down. Oh, I? As Vincent's pulling out all of his like ridiculous amounts of uh, okay. spell components and he's like getting ready. <laughs> okay. Um. You know, I kind of like those odds. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna run out. Vincent, 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 wait, 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 wait. Huh? Before you, you know, get all situated. Huh? I think we might have a way out that doesn't involve you having to take so much energy. Oh, thank God. This yeah. was gonna be a big production. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank God we got it stopped. Um, we have a way out, I think. Okay. Renair, will you help me um, and Bonnie carry Azerum? Yes, yes, absolutely. Bonnie responds. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, let's go. They heave Azram up. Azram, you're kind of in this huge state. Oh, it's it's okay. No, just nothing. You're, you're fine. conscious, definitely, but you're just like... It's like you were daydreaming, and all of a sudden you're knocked out of the daydream. Just, oh, it's okay, oh, it's okay, you're fine. Where's my fine. dagger? Yeah, you don't need it. You're good. Dagger? What? Okay. Let's go. Doc keeps ringing it, directs you to go to the back room where he's been going in and out of. He says, all right, if you just move that crate over in the corner, this back room is a small cramped space with like a cot in the back with like a little nightstand, a bunch of crates of supplies. And he points over towards one that's just in the corner of the room collecting dust. I'll move it. Okay, you pull it in that space. There is what looks to be this hole that just descends downward um, that looks to be and made whole. This way? That's the way. All right, and I'll climb down in it. You climb down into this subterranean, not super deep tunnel that is lower below Doc Berry's. He says, I don't know who else is going to be down here considering the situation. He says he keeps ringing this uh. near Azram. So when they see you, just identify yourself as not part of the Donegan gang, and there shouldn't be any problems. Before I head down completely, can I just make sure that there is, kind of clean up the area, make it look like there wasn't really a lot going on here before we went down, and kind of pull the crate over as we head down, just to make it look at less like there was movement. Yes, yeah. You want to cover your tracks? Yeah. Make a survival check. Alright, that's a 25. 25. Ladaro wipes clean any trace of you all being in this building as anything that you had touched basically is just completely it's as if it was never there. Or it's as if you were never there. You all disappear down. Ladaro's the last one out. Pulls the crate back over the hole and you're left in this very dark space. Uh, Renair kind of speaks up to do they don't have a light? I don't have oh, vision. Uh, I think I'm the only one? No, I think Azram also can't see in the dark. Well, he doesn't need to right now. <laughs> but right. I, I, I've got you. Uh, um, I'm gonna pull out a candle and I'm gonna light a, just a little candle on a... yeah. This little space is not like a basement or a cellar with well made. It is very much a hastily made like burrowed tunnel that you see just kind of stretches forward and turns over towards the end. You're not entirely sure where it leads as the doc keeps ringing it, keeping his eyes open, following behind as you all trudge further down this tunnel. Can I make a perception check and just see what is... Make a perception check. 28. 28! You're listening for further ahead, and you can hear shuffling much, much further down the tunnel. And what doc was saying, that there's other people here, it becomes very apparent as you can hear other people moving in these tunnels as Doc is ding, bringing this. It's echoing throughout the tunnel. There's not a lot of opportunities to hide this sound. Can I kind of push ahead and kind of get in front of everyone just so I can like get a head start just in case we encounter anyone? I can 
be the first cushion <laughs> on that whole situation. I've got a candle out, and you just like go like, under my arm, and I'm like, all right, okay, all right, okay. There she I'm goes. Small. There it's she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Lajara pushes ahead, weaving and bobbing through the group, um, making your way to the front. You trudge on ahead. You turn the corner. You see it further that this just keeps going. Eventually, however, as you are carrying Azram's semi-conscious body through this subterranean man-made tunnel, you see light at the end. It's not a lot of light, like sunlight or anything like that. It's just like the faintest bits of like lanterns and they're moving. It looks like there's a room at the end of this tunnel. What are you all doing? Is this the way? Uh, yeah, there's only one way, just kind of forward. Should, yeah, should we so. should we announce our presence? Should we be, you know, should we say anything? Yeah, specific? yeah. Um, Doc Barry kind of raises his voice a little bit, and he says, We're friendly. We're not Donegan gang. It's the Doc. There's a silence, and you hear another voice say, Oh, come on through. Oh, thank God. You make your way down the tunnel. And you push into what looks to be a much larger space, though still relatively cramped vertical-wise. It's a cellar. It's a damp space with a low ceiling that smells of dust and mildew mixed with aging wood along with another smell you can't quite place, a sharper smell. And despite the amount of people packed in here, it is relatively tense and very silent. You Can I try to read the room. Yeah, make an insight check. <laughs> read, read the room. room. <laughs> Where you the, lead in. What's the vibe, honestly? Okay, that's a 12. Tense. Everyone's silent. And as you look around, you begin to notice people that you've seen, people in the saloons, people watching you from the sides of the roads. These are citizens of Goldstead. These are people that live here. They're all underneath. And they're armed. <laughs> you can see that there is, in the corner of the room, there is this sort of elven and heritage um, person. She carries reddish-brown skin with dark hair that's cut very short, and she's wearing leather armor. And you can see there are burns across her arms as she is pulling equipment from crates and arming each citizen with, like, swords and shields and leather armor as they take their spears and their shields and their swords and they just sit and wait for further orders. Um, Doc, quick question. Yep. What kind of operation did we stumble into? Uh, yeah, where is she? Give me a second. Uh, Grumbly, yeah, we're here. We're, and you hear sort of that voice that let, oh, perfect. And then she turns and you see a figure that you and Renair have seen before. Ooh. Um, a, a woman of dwarven heritage, her skin a darker brown with smile lines that are set deep into her face. Her hair is full of strong curls, which she has tied back. And as she's kind of walking around, kind of going to more tense people and patting them on the shoulder and being like, you've got this. Uh, she turns and she says, ah, oh, you two, you're the travelers Hi. from earlier. Hi. Crumbly, the owner of the general store. Uh, Remember I uh, sold you all the supplies and rations yes. for everything? Yeah, thank you about that. Um, nice to see you again, I guess? It's no problem. It's very nice to see you, too. It's funny how things turn out. It's a small town, but you get to know everyone, then you see them in nice, interesting places. Oh, uh, speaking of interesting place, uh, and I look around. <laughs> yeah, where are what? we? What is this? What's going on? Oh, we're right beneath the church. You know, the, there's a okay. church to the morning, Lord, that's been a bit abandoned for a while. It's huh. on the opposite of Dock. Uh, a little bit further into town, if you go opposite of Duckberries, you do a little... Right, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's a nice place. Oh, sorry. I should right. the, uh, do the know. official stuff first. Welcome to the Resistance! Oh, I see. A Resistance. Thank Are, you. I'm assuming that we'll be fighting soon? Yes. Uh, yes. We're we kind heard? of working out... <laughs> The last bits of the plan. Is your friend there all right? Oh, um, he got, he has a thing, but... We have to keep him... Uh, we're taking care of it. Doc has it handled. Right, you're okay, Doc, right? Yeah, I, I think I got it, honestly. 
I just need to keep doing this business. And she says, okay, well, that's a little bit loud. And we don't... We oh, no, he really... can't stop or else he'll die. Yeah. It's like he has awkward. to do it for like several more hours or else... We have what? Okay, we'll step further into the tunnel over there and do that. I'm sorry to be so inhospitable there, but it's just <laughs> to keep all the people in here a, safe. Bit of a nuisance. That, wait, what's safe? From what? Oh, from just, them. Oh, oh. Up you top. think they can hear us from all the way down here? If they come by the church, then then yes. It, this place is pretty abandoned, so most aren't going to, but we don't want to risk any noise oh, just right. coming up through the floorboards, that sort of thing. All right, all right, all right. You can see now as you look around, there are a lot of these man-made tunnels that just kind of like are broken. Like it breaks through the wall of this cellar and just all kind of converges here. And she says, well, we're, we were expecting to have a little bit more time before we tried any of this stuff out, but it looks like we're bit out of uh, time. Our schedule's been a little bit advanced, and I don't want to blame that on any of you. What? But, she points at Bonnie, Bounty Hunter? Genasi? Not, it wasn't he, him. He's it, being framed. Not, that's a little racist. Oh, he's that's not, fair. He's not being framed. Oh, it's, it's not, not the same. It's not that's, the same at all. That is so embarrassing on my... I'm so sorry about totally that. Totally fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get like one but Genasi we, comes through, causes havoc, you know, another but one comes We don't up. see a lot of Genasi. It's quite exciting, honestly. We don't really see people that are touched by the old Vondrick gods anymore, but, you know. Well, here he is, and he's dying, so... Oh! Gotta protect him. That's so... sad. Who do we got here? Who's... what... like... Who are these oh. people? Oh! Well, that's Bill from the barber shop, Hi, and Bill. there's Morgan from the stables. Morgan? Let's see... Trillo was part of this whole thing, but he kind of ran out on us around when all those other bandits came into town earlier. You, remember, you ever see the gnomish bartender we at the saloon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's out. I, I thought we'd be we able to see him again. He's definitely gone. scared that man out well, he's of definitely business. Gone. Yes. Well, oh, well. Just fully abandoned us. But that's all right. It's we all told him to go. It was fine. Well, you know, his own choices. But yes, that's uh, Haley from down the street. That's, Haley? Um, it, she's kind of going around introducing all these people. Hi. And Wait, eventually, people? we're just, uh, you know... More so, we were looking for like the big picture on what is happening here. That's right, the big picture. <laughs> of course, you're here for the big picture. Big picture here, spellcaster, light on your feet. We might need your help. The other one, do you think that he'll be in any state to fight? We got about six hours left on that. I see. And I also personally, I'm. We've had a long day, and I've got. Not much left in me. I've just got my weapons. I can fight. I can no, you there. cannot. Doc, Doc kind of says, it's like, it's not impossible for for him to fight. No. It's just that if I do stop, it's just going to be painful. It doesn't mean that this whole thing's going to come bursting out all at once, but it certainly is going to try, that sort of thing. So if things get dire, then then he can stand to his feet and do that sort of thing. I would prefer not to. Yeah, that'll if be we, a very last resort. If but... we need him, then... We'll get him out, but for now. Put me in, Doc. No, no, no. That's no, no, a bad no, no, idea. No. Doc, don't listen to a damn thing he says. Yeah, he's delirious. He doesn't he know what he's talking about. Doesn't know his own. Is there like I don't know any way to speed up that process for us? Or I'm like, it'd be really helpful to have him. But like, I get it. I just figured I'd ask. I invite. Go, go. Okay, please. Give me Dot again. Didn't to get Azram back into the fight. Yes. He's gonna roll something. Doc says, okay, well, I can, can, when I continue this process, thankfully, because it was done with the right equipment, I can start right where I left off. The second that tone hits again, that thing's gonna go right back to into its stage of dematerialization where I left right off. However, it will rematerialize very quickly and very angrily. If we want to get that out of the way right now, then we can do it. But I'm going to need y'all's help to hold him down. If you have something that can keep him calm and keep him from panicking. Okay. Right now, if it's in the bloodstream. So if that if things get too out of hand, could be bad. But if we want to get Azram into the fight, then I need to stop this right now. And I need to stop it before anything catches me off guard. That sort of thing. Doc says, make your choice. You stop it now. What do you think, Ladora? Do now? I think I think we that should... we could use him. 
And I think that if... Yeah, probably. I know that I don't want him to be in any pain at all. And Azram, I'm just gonna say I'm so sorry for anything this might cause you, but I know that I think you could be very, very helpful. If you die, I'll bring you back. Put me in, Doc. I got it. Doc says, all right. And then as the uh, the tone dries out, Doc doesn't hit it again. Your senses return to you, Azram, and with that sense, excruciating pain. Make a constitution saving throw. Lazar <laughs> immediately like runs over and kind of like, to, like Doc's hold holding him. him. Yeah, she kind of like tries to like hold him and be like, okay. Just okay. holding him. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Fuck! <laughs> like, Just make sure he doesn't hit his head. Patting his head. And... Constitution save? Constitution save. It's 10. <sighs> 10 oh is not going to do it. Take another point of exhaustion. Damn. Damn. Your speed is halved, which will play itself out in other situations. But you get back up, you feel it pushing, and your skin pulling, and it settles. Stock says, okay, get out there, and uh, be careful about any... What's the word I'm looking for here? Don't take any big hits. So stay it as far away as possible. We will, I can go up first. You just stay back, maybe do some cool lightning shit. I don't we'll know. Make a, we'll make a plan. That's fine. Yeah. We'll stay in the back. We, we're good at plans. Well. All right, let's go. <clears throat> okay. Where are we? Um, we'll explain oh, in a yeah. minute. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Howdy. I'm Crumbly. It's very nice to meet you. You're going, are you a spellcaster? I think I've heard about you. You were the one throwing lassos of lightning out there. That sort of thing. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I can lightning. Fantastic. Ooh. That sounds perfect. Well, let's go kill ourselves some gang members. We pan away from this damp church cellar where the citizens of Goldstead all gather, planning their resistance, planning their final stand. And we make our way back to the main drag of town. And there, as orange flames consume a dry wooden building, the Minotaur stands looking upon the destruction. Her eyes move to the gleaming metal of the revolvers that fire their victory cries into the night sky. All of this for an eyesore of a town. Her eyes moved to her own gun, this long, double-barreled shotgun. Such a damn waste. Thank you so much for listening to the Strings of Fate podcast. We upload new episodes to our YouTube channel every Wednesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Be sure to also follow us on our other socials. On Instagram, we are at the Strings of Fate, and on Twitter, we are at underscore Strings of Fate. Yes, the strings of fate was taken. No, we're not bitter. Anyway, have a great day. Bye!